Greetings friends and welcome to the advanced grenade slash advanced explosive ability guide. So in this video we're going to go over how to add a few bells and whistles, add a little bit of spice to your grenades. The first thing we're going to do is show you how to add some visual effects to your grenade, namely an explosion, which all grenades really do need. Then we're going to go over a few other kinds of grenades. So we're going to have a sticky grenade, kind of like Semtex in Call of Duty. We're going to have a remote detonation grenade, kind of like C4. We're going to have an implosion grenade for the Titanfall fans out there, think the Gravity Star. And then finally we're going to have a smoke grenade. I hope these videos work for you and are super helpful. Let's get stuck in. Woohoo! In show and hide, I've got preview and visibility, I've got that unticked. So that's important if you want to edit things that are being omitted, because when you choose something to be omitted, as you can see, they vanish. So to edit things that are being omitted, you just go preview and visibility, and you can mess with them. Alrighty. Alrighty, so I'm using my grenade thrower that I made in my ability guide. Um, if you haven't checked that out, it might be a good idea. But here we are, we have the basic building blocks of any grenade. We've got a timer, which is like the fuse. We've got the force apply, which is the explosive force. The health modifier, which deals damage. And then the destroyer, so that when the grenade explodes, it actually does disappear. But we want to add something a bit more to this. We want to add some spice, and that is an explosion. So we're going to go into um, search. Oh, and just as a side, a side um, right now, I've made this ability guide slash tutorial collection. So if you're interested in my other vids, I've got all my tutorials here and all the characters from them. So you can check that out. But let's crack on with the actual video. All right, so in the Dreamiverse, you can go to the Quick Start Collection by Media Molecule, then go to the MM Effects. And there's a whole bunch of cool ones here. I think I'm gonna go with Explosion. So I'm gonna stamp this over here, and then press circle to get rid of it. So now the next question we have is, how do we add this to our grenade itself? How do we get these visual effects in? Well, we're going to use an emitter. So we're going to stick down an emitter and you're thinking, but mate, normally emitters shoot stuff out. How's it going to make an explosion appear? Well, if you set an emitter's emit speed to zero, it will kind of just spawn the particular thing in. So if you have it at zero, it's just going to appear. Then we're going to change the emitted object lifetime. So the thing that it emits or spawns is only going to be there for one second. And then we're going to make emit mode just once. So this is going to make the explosion appear exactly where we choose to make it appear. Um, it's not going to move or anything. And it's only going to last for one second. So it's kind of like a bit of a, it's kind of like a keyframe in its own, in its own right, you know. Alrighty. Now our object that we want to emit is, of course, this explosion over here. Now we've got a nice explosion. We're going to move this white bauble, this white ball over here. And we're going to move it to the center of the grenade because that's where it's going to be. You can scale this up. It looks pretty big now, but actually when you're in game, it's, it's a little bit smaller because a lot of these effects are kind of just like floaty effects um, and aren't super visible. And so, yeah, that's what you're going to be doing. Alrighty. So for this, we're just going to make it so that just like with all the other things, it's going to be connected to the timer finish. Alrighty. Let's have a look to see if this works. Let's go into play mode and let's throw a grenade. Whoa. Boom! There you are, friends. There is the explosion uh, effect on our grenade. It looks pretty badass. It looks pretty awesome right now. Alrighty, friends. I hope this section was good for you. Anywho, let's crack on with our next video, which is going to be on woohoo! Baboom! Sticky grenades. Let's get to it. Woohoo! Greetings friends, and now we're going to get stuck in with our sticky grenade. So, with our sticky grenade, it's important to um, realize what our physical tweaks are for the grenade. So, in the original video, in the OG one, we made it so that it's movable, and we gave it a bit of a bounce. Because this is a sticky grenade, and it's going to, as soon as it hits something, it's going to be stuck, we're going to turn bounce off. Um, and then the rest of the physical tweaks we can leave just like that. Then what we're going to do is go into the microchip for our grenade, and we're going to just extend it ever so slightly. And we're going to give it the stickiness. So we've got our basic grenade bits. We've got all our force and our explosions and so on and so forth. But we want to make it stick to something. Think like Semtex and Call of Duty and all those sorts of things. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go to gadgets. We're going to close anything else that we've got. Go to sensors and input. Then this lovely sensor called an impact sensor, which is really cool. If you haven't uh, tried this one out, definitely start messing around with it because you can do all sorts. Um, the way that the impact sensor works is when something is, it senses when something is touched or bumped or rolled or is scraped or whatever scrapes and it, it um, gives you an output that you can use. So it's, it's a super cool and versatile tool. So devs, check that out. 
for our purposes today, we're going to make it so that when our grenade touches something, it's going to activate a keyframe. While we're in this keyframe and while we're still recording, we've got that cool red imp going. We're going to go into the physical tweaks of our grenade. Alrighty. And then we're going to untick movable. And then we're going to tick uh, ignore gravity. Or we're going to turn ignore gravity on. What does this do, you ask, with, with tears in your eyes? Well, essentially what it does is, let's just connect these two. Well, actually, let's go into impact sensor and make it so that it's when it's touching. The default one is bumps, and bumps works just as fine. If you want to be extra sure, you can connect bumps as well. It's really up to you. Um, so what the ignore gravity and making it no longer movable does is, it um, when it touches something, um, it ignores gravity and it's no longer movable, so it's essentially frozen in place. So it kind of gets stuck, just like a sticky grenade. One final tweak, which is super important, is to have keep changes on. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck, but only for a split second, which isn't our, which isn't what we want. Alrighty, so there's our grenade. This is the section that makes it nice and sticky, and this is just the classic grenade stuff. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Alrighty, and here we go. Hoo, cha, ba boom. Hoo, wow, I'm. Oh, my eyes are damaged after that. But as you can see, friends, whoops. Just as I said, this is now a sticky grenade. It gets stuck there, it doesn't bounce around, and then it explodes. Whoa! See, it gets stuck, it gets stuck. And there you are, friends, that is a sticky grenade. Woohoo, I hope it helps. Next thing we're going to move on to is the remote detonation grenade. Woo, let's check it out. Okay, my dear friends, here we are again. I've got my grenade here at the moment. It's a sticky grenade, but really I can just um, remove these things just like that, and it's now no longer a sticky grenade. Now it's just a good old fashioned grenade with a fuse. But we don't actually want a grenade with a fuse anymore because that's just a bit basic. We want something that is going to be detonated on command. And so the way that we're going to do that is we are going to go into our sensors and input, and we're going to choose a this one with a controller on, a controller sensor. And we're going to delete the timer. Be gone, timer. Alrighty. So now what happens is we're going to go into our controller sensor. We're going to go into the important properties with a little imp there. And we're going to say remote controllable. Remote controllable means that you don't have to possess something in order for your controls to affect it. Does that make sense? I hope so. Then what's going to happen is we're pretty much just going to connect this to... Eh, eh, eh. We're just going to connect this to all our effects. So you can throw the grenade and it will be it will be doing all the classic things. Um, when I was doing the sticky grenade pod, I actually removed the bounce from it. So I'm just going to quickly turn the bounce back on. So I'm just going to go into physical properties and give it a bit more bounce because I did turn that off. Um, but if you didn't do the sticky grenade uh, video, it doesn't worry. So d it doesn't matter so long as you've got the uh, so long as you've got some bounce there. And now I'm going to make it so that it's triangle. So here we are. We've got our grenade. It's not going to detonate unless I press. <laughs> unless I press. Unless I press triangle. Boom. So not the most impressive explosion, but boom, it detonates on my command. And I can do multiple at once. Boom. So yeah, it'll it'll only turn on, it'll only detonate when I activate it. So all you have to do is have your grenade as per usual, but it, rather than a timer, have your controller sensor, have the important properties set to remote controllable, and then just connect it to a, a, a key, uh, bind it to a particular key, and then you will have a grenade that can be remotely detonated. There you are, friends. Alrighty, that is rather fabulous. And now, on to the next one. Woohoo! Hey, friends, the next thing we're going to get into is the implosion grenade. And the implosion grenade is super easy. The only thing I'm going to do is just add in another wall. So I'm just going to clone this and put it here, just so that you can see the effect of the implosion grenade a bit more effectively. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go into the grenade and we're going to go to the force applier. And we're going to go in the force mode. Rather than push, it's going to be pull. And that's pretty much it. You've got an implosion grenade. One thing that I've noticed, though, is that it's a good idea to make it a little bit larger. To make the implosion a little bit little bit larger. Um, like an explosion, an explosion can be whatever size. But I find that for the implosion grenade to like have uh, uh, a sort of noticeable effect, it's a good idea to make it just quite a bit larger. So that it kind of pulls a whole huge area down and it's really it's really noticeable. That's just a little tweak, depends on what you want it to be. Alrighty, and let's go for it. So here we are. 
and let us check out our implosion grenade. Boo! So there we are, it kind of collapses in on itself. And that's the way to do an implosion grenade, friends. I hope it helps and you found it good and useful. Woohoo! Alrighty, friends, and here we are in the final section. And we're going to add a smoke grenade. So the smoke grenade is quite unlike any of the other grenades because it doesn't really do damage. I mean, you can make it so that it does damage, but I feel like prim primarily it's a kind of a support thing that obscures vision. So we're going to remove the health modifier. We're going to remove the force supplier and we're going to remove the emitter because it's not really an explosion when you have a, a smoke grenade but what there is going to be we're actually going to destroy the destroyer as well how ironic is that we're going to go to cameras and lighting and we're going to go fog so what fog does is let's have a look at fog it creates it in a kind of a particular area you're going to want to put density to pretty much max you're going to want to put noise strength also pretty high you're going to want to put noise scale kind of high. Really, these things you can mess with as you want, you know, as they as they work for you. And then you're going to want to make it black or gray or all those all those things depend on you, of course. And you're also going to want to make it quite large. You're also going to want to make it quite large so that when you put your your uh, smoke grenade down, there's going to be a nice bit of smoke appearing there. So then We'll put it on a one second timer so that you throw your grenade and then after one second, oh, rather than it being on the pulse, okay, we're going to have it on the timer finished signal. So the difference between a pulse and a signal is that a pulse is instantaneous, so it works for things like explosions and that sort of a thing. But for something that's going to be continuous, like smoke being continuously poured out of your grenade, for example, is going to be a signal rather than a pulse. That's just a little bit of logic, a little bit of logic guide there for you logic tip as it were and then um, once this one second is done we don't want the smoke to last forever so our timer is actually going to lead to another timer and that can be a pulse that's perfectly fine because it just starts the timer and that can be five seconds and then after those five seconds let's get that destroyer back we're going to destroy it so sorry it's not very neatly it's not very neatly done here I must say let me maybe move it over here so we've got our after we're going to throw a grenade after one second it's going to start pumping out smoke that smoke is going to be there for five seconds after five seconds it's going to be destroyed and disappear so let's have a look at how it turned out smoke grenade away oh there we are so something you might want to do is if you don't want your um, grenade to be uh, jumping around and uh, rolling around then you can just make it you can make it so that when that one second is up, you can add a little keyframe, quite similar to a sticky grenade. You can just go to it and set its physical properties to no longer movable, ignore gravity, and there you are. And that can also be triggered by the timer finished. Remember to say keep changes. And then we'll have a grenade that falls and then lands and then once it starts pumping out smoke it is stuck where it is and look it's quite nice it starts to actually throw the throw the blocks around so there is like a bit of a force and if you go into it it's like what's happening it really it really does mess with your view so friends there you are that is a smoke grenade which is the last of our advanced grenade um, ability guide uh, tutorial vids t for today I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. And, oh, look, I even knocked this over. I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Thanks for sticking around. And, uh, yeah, I hope these videos were helpful and you enjoyed them. Peace out. <laughs>